Welcome to this pre-practical video on structural analysis. My name is Mark Jenkinson and I'll take you through an overview of this particular practical. And you'll see that they're divided into the three main parts which we would recommend that everybody does and then some optional extensions which are going to depend on people's individual interests. In this overview we'll just cover the core parts of the practical. The first one is FAST which is our tool for doing tissue type segmentation and bias field correction. What we do in this section is that we are going to go into the directory and I'll have a look at what's in this directory. And so you can see that there are several images that we start with here. What we're going to do first is to do some brain extraction. So we're going to perform brain extraction on this structural image. And we're going to do that in the same way that we've done that before. So nothing special. And then we're going to look at the result of that as we would normally do. After we've done that, we're actually going to run this command, which is FSL ROI, which actually creates a cut down version of the image. And we're going to do that so that we end up with five slices. The idea of doing this is simply so that we have a smaller image to work with so that all of the commands run much more quickly so that you can actually do them during the practical. Otherwise, you would find that a run of fast might take anywhere between five or 15 minutes. But actually the way that you would run it doesn't change at all. It's the same if you run it on a small number of slices as if you run it on an entire image. Once you've done that, you'll end up with a set of images like this. So now I've not only got the structural, but I've got structural brain and I've got structural brain ROI. You can also see that we've got versions which are structural brain 7T and 7T ROI. And they are images which were taken on the 7T scanner of the same individual. And this part of the practical is related to the section in the lecture where we discuss bias field correction, particularly how we would take an original image like this, which has bias field in it, estimate the bias field and a restored image. If I load up these images into fossilized, then they, go, they look like this. So as you can see, it's a very small number of slices, but each axial slice is in full. And this is what the 70 image looks like. And this is what the original one looks like. And crucially, if I flick backwards and forwards, you can see that the anatomy is the same, but the bias field is very different. We're then going to run FAST, our tool, in order to estimate the bias field and create a segmentation. And we're going to start the GUI, going to input my image here. It's automatically going to fill in my output base name. So it's actually going to not overwrite that image, but create other images with different extensions to that. And I want to save both the restored image and the estimated bias field, as well as increasing the number of iterations for the bias field removal to be 10, to reflect that these images have a relatively strong bias field. I would then click go and I would run it for both this image at the 3T and I'd run it for the 7T image. Once that's finished, we're going to have a look at the bias estimates that it outputs. So you can see these two are very different so this one was estimated in the 70, this one being estimated on the 3T, and we've actually set the minimum and the maximum display range to be the same in each case, which is helpful when you're looking at images which actually have quantitative values in them like this. After that, we'll look at the segmentations that it outputs, and this part of the practical relates to segmentation, looking at both the hard segmentation, which is the underscore seg output, and the PVE, or the partial volume estimates, which are underscore PVE, where you would see three different outputs. So first, by looking at the hard segmentations, which should look something like this, and you can see that they're substantially different in the hard segmentation. And then we would look at the partial volume segmentation that we get. And there's a specific command that you can run, which will create a fossilized window, which will open these things for you. And you can toggle off the various different ones, which are all in different colors to see where it's actually created the segmentations and what values it has, um, both in the center of the tissues and then at the edges. And finally, then we do a calculation of the quantity of tissue using the FSL stats command. And that's the end of the section on FAST, which takes you through how to use FAST either as a bias correction tool or in order to do segmentation and then quantify the results. The next section of the practical looks at the tool first which is, if you remember from the lecture, the tool that we use for looking at subcortical brain structure segmentation, particularly looking at a set of structures like this and the processes that it goes through of registration, then modeling and boundary correction. 
These are reflected in the different sections within this practical. And in this first part of the practical, we're going to see how to run this using a command line. The command line can do all of the sections of the registration, followed by the fitting, followed by the boundary correction. But in this instance, we're actually going to already give it the results of a registration here. So this matrix is the matrix you should be familiar with from having done linear registrations before. We're passing that in in this instance just in order to save some time. So it's one that's already been pre-calculated. But in practice, you could do this command without having that section and it would then automatically calculate the registration as part of that command. So that command does all of these three sections of the segmentation for you. Importantly though, we still want to check the registration. And so one of the things that it will ask you to do is to actually look at these images. And so this will show you the, the registered image on top of the standard space, which is what it's being registered to. And ignore the stuff around the edge because it's not trying to concentrate on the edge. This is subcortical registration. So all that we really care about is how well it is doing in some of the subcortical structures. And it's really doing that for initialization. So it's far from perfect in many places, but it's quite close to where it needs to be. Importantly, you'll also be asked to check whether there are any errors in the logs. And so this is the command that we would use to do that. And when you run that within your terminal, you should see that it actually gives you nothing as a result. So it will simply give you the next prompt back with no output at all. And that's a good thing. We don't want to see any errors. So that's what we would hope to see when it's working well. And then the next part allows you to look at what's happened with the boundary correction. So the boundary correction has already been run as part of that first command line. And here we're simply viewing the results of that. And this is what we would see. This image that the ridge segs actually contains the information about what parts are considered to be the interior and what parts are considered to be on the boundary, which you can see by the, the different colors here. This ridge segs output also is a 4D structure. So actually there are different volumes and I can click up with the different volumes and see different structures that it's done because for each structure, we will have boundary voxels and they potentially overlap. And in, certainly in this case with the hippocampus and the amygdala, they do overlap. We, in addition, you can also look at the first seg output, which is actually the corrected version. So that's after boundary correction has been applied. And you can see that in some instances, there are parts where the boundary, which is shown in yellow here, which is coming from the one underneath, has been removed, has been considered to be not part of that structure. So that's the section on how to actually perform the segmentation. As you can see, it's quite simple. The next section looks at how to perform vertex analysis when you've got a group of individuals and you want to see differences in the shape. And this relates to the section of the lecture where we talked about vertex analysis. In this practical, we just have a small selection. So we have a group of eight subjects, five controls and three Alzheimer's patients. And there's different enough that you will still see a significant effect. So this section takes you through all of the various steps involved in running a vertex analysis. But actually all of the original segmentations have already been done for you. So the individual segmentations of each of the individual subjects, just like we were doing in the, the part beforehand. In order to check what they look like, there's a command to just visualize them and you'll get an output like this, which just allows you a quick visual check of what the quality looks like. The next step is a simple command line, which just combines them all together. And then following that, we actually need to set up some statistics. Now, if you haven't done statistics before, that's fine. You can simply follow these instructions and we will cover statistics in other parts of the course. But this is an illustration of how statistics is actually used everywhere. So in order to do that, we start the GLM GUI and we're going to change it to a high level design because we've, we're looking at different subjects. We're going to change that to eight in this instance because we've only got eight subjects. We're going to change the first five, which are our controls, so that they have a minus one for the modeling and then a plus one for the next three. This column we're going to leave as all ones because that's a modeling group variance, which we're going to consider they all have the same group variance. And this is simply allowing us to model the difference between the means of the two different groups. And then we're going to set up some contrast and we're going to have one F contrast as well as uh, one T contrast, and we're going to call that group difference. Now, as I said, if this doesn't mean anything to you at the moment, don't worry about it because we will cover this in great detail later on. So once you've set up that design, you can just check you get something like this when you do a view design 
and then it's a question of simply saving that result. I'm going to make sure that I'm in the right directory for where I want to be and I'm going to save it with the name that it asks for in the practical. And that's it. I've now saved that design and that is enough to allow us to do the statistics which are going to happen here. So we have a, a simple command which we can run there. So I can simply copy and paste that in here and that's going to run this particular command. But that only is one step. Then we also have to do some statistics. And this is actually the command which is going to do the statistics. And it uses a tool called randomize which we use for non-parametric statistics within FSL. It's used across all of the different types of things we do, structural diffusion and functional analysis. So it's a very general tool as a setting up GLMs, and these are things which we will cover in great detail in other parts of the course. So again, if this is not familiar, don't worry, just recognize that this is what's actually running the statistics and that you'll become familiar with the details later on. The idea here is simply to understand how to go about the process of running the shape analysis and then seeing what you get afterwards. So finally, there's a command to look at the results which you would have, and we can actually see those here. And this is what you would see. So it's done in the MNI space. So this is our MNI template underneath. And here we see with the colored voxels, those parts of the hippocampus which have actually shown a significant shape change between our two different groups, in this case, controls and AD patients. And that's the section on running first for subcortical segmentation and then looking at vertex analysis. The next section is on VBM or voxel-based morphometry. Now, this takes a lot longer to actually run because the pipeline has to do a lot more things. And so you'll find in this section of the practical that most things have already been run for you. And actually you'll be simply looking at the results of things, but it will show you what commands were used to in order to get to those results. So that if you had your own data, you could go through that process. It talks about what images go into making the template. And then there are a series of different steps, which are in these red boxes, which show you what would have been necessary to actually run if you were going to run this uh, analysis from scratch but in this case has already been run for you, so you don't have to do it because that is going to take more time than you would be able to spare in the practical session. Each of these sections maps onto part of the pipeline which was described in the lecture. So in this case, it's the first stage is just BET, and that relates to just the brain extraction portion here, so that's fairly simple. Then later on, after we've looked at some of the outputs, we look at the template creation, which is the rest of the top stage of the pipeline, which makes a study specific template. So a template out of the subjects which are actually used within this analysis. And again, once you've done that, it shows you commands that you can use to have a look at the results that come up from that. One of the things that you will have to run is actually the GLM GUI again in order to actually set up a design matrix in order to specify what subjects we've got and in what groups. So again, if you haven't covered that before, don't worry, just follow the details instructions here and I will show you how to set that up. It uses the wizard in this case, so it's actually quite simple. One of the commands to look at the outputs is this, which allows us to look at the aligned versions of the different subjects and particularly their gray matter because that's what VBM is going to be looking at. And if you load this here, then you can actually scroll through the different subjects which have been involved and see how well their gray matter is aligned to the template or aligned crucially to, to each other. And you can see here good alignment between subjects, particularly given the variation in their folding patterns. The next step that you'll look at relates to the third part of the pipeline, which actually is all of the processes which go on after the template creation in order to register and then do the Jacobian modulation of the data and the smoothing. And as a consequence, you get a number of different outputs out, which include different smooth, smoothing levels. So there's S2, S3 and S4, which represent two, three and four millimeters of smoothing. And there's a command here to allow you to look at the differences that you would see from that. But remember that the result of that is simply the data that we're going to feed into our statistical analysis. And so therefore, the last thing that we're going to do is actually going to be running our statistical analysis 
and again it's the command randomize and that will allow you to run the statistical analysis on the data that you've just created through the pipeline and then finally a fossilize command to look at the outputs. So that's what the VBM part of the practical is going to be doing. As I said, you're largely looking at results which have already been created for you, but it shows you the different steps which would have been necessary in order to actually repeat that analysis. So you can understand how it was done, but you don't have to spend so long waiting for it to be done within this practical. If you want to do it another time, you can certainly do it from scratch and run those commands yourself and everything should work. After that, there are some optional sections related to Bianca and Sienna, and then extra things about related to first and fast. If you're interested in any of these particular things, then please do have a look at it. But really, it's the core three which we recommend that everybody has a look at.